one of the amazing headlines that came out over the last month of a lot of amazing headlines was uh, in the New York Times an op-ed yes an attack would be illegal but it's the right thing to do anyway <laughs> and it occurred to me that uh, it <coughs> less amazing than let's say it would have been uh, 15 years ago because starting with 9-11 really we've lived in a country with a president now a Democrat as well as a Republican who clearly feels himself, in the words of Berkeley's own tenured professor of law, John Yu, Y-O-O, that the president is beyond any law, that illegal is not a category that applies to presidents. And as a matter of fact, uh, there was recently a, uh, just yesterday now, as the mood has changed a couple of weeks, a headline by Lindsey Graham and Senator McCain saying, this is the worst possible message we could be sending to Iran. Well, what did he mean by that? I think that the message that quite specifically, first of all, a lot of people have analyzed it, and I think convincingly, that the reason that Israel and its supporters in Congress and APAC have been so in favor of this otherwise seemingly crazy idea of attacking Iran in the midst of this war is that it sends a message to Iran. They're more or less uh, explicit about that. And what is the message they wanted sent to Iran? That Iran must not get nuclear weapons? Actually, I don't think that nuclear weapons in, in the hands of Iran are, uh, uh, or preventing, I should say, nuclear weapons in the hands of the present regime in Iran is Israel's primary uh, aim and motive here. Why am I talking about Israel at all? Well, there was even a, an item in the New York Times which says the 800-pound gorilla in the room is APAC and is Israel's, and no one is willing to talk about it. And there was a good deal of uh, quoting then of APAC and uh, the American-Israel PAC, Political Affairs Council, uh, to their own readers. Let's keep a low profile on this. Uh, let's not make it a war for Israel. Don't show our head too much here. Uh, let things take their course as they seemed ready to do in the way of attacking uh, Syria. When it came to look as though the president might be tempted not to attack Syria, that there was public uh, opposition to that, APEC had no choice but to show their hand and send 300 lobbyists into Capitol Hill to do their best. And frankly, even when uh, the president amazingly, and to the surprise of his and, and uh, unhappiness of his own advisors, decided to go to Congress for their support on the war. I didn't think, I was glad to see that, but I didn't think that was the end of the story. I think, will Congress really resist the pressure they're going to get from APAC and from the congressional leaders of both parties who respond so um, sensitively to the threats that APAC make to them, that they will be uh, turned out of office, essentially, uh, if they don't do what Israel wants. Come back to the point. Uh, it, by the way, APAC did not win on this. So it was a bad message as far as uh, APAC was concerned, what Graham and um, uh, McCain were talking about. I think that the message that Israel would most have liked seen given to Iran, but given to the American people, is that nothing could stop, nothing could stop the president from doing what the people who believe that Israel's interests are absolutely identical with the U.S., that the two are totally aligned, nothing could stop him from following that, not law, not Congress, not the Constitution, not total unpopularity in his own uh, country. And when I say law, I'm referring there not just to the Constitution, but to the UN Charter, which has the force of law, and which clearly, as the headline writer admitted, made this an illegal war, that is to say, a war of aggression. Like um, Iraq, which was a crime of aggression, a war of aggression, but in that, which had very great popular uh, oppose, uh, opposition to it. You'll remember that 
both in the case of the Iraq War and some of you will remember in the case of the Gulf War, there were enormous, enormous unprecedented rallies against that war uh, before it started. In the case of the Iraq War, the largest in world history, over 15 million people on one day around the world, yet apparently having no effect. But even there, a large part of the country believed that our own safety was at risk, and so did support it. Here we have a case where the unpopularity was not confined to the anti-war movement or to rallies. In fact, I don't recall there being uh, very large rallies, relatively speaking, in this case. It all happened so suddenly after August 21st. But the pop unpopularity that was very widespread and not limited to the anti-war movement or the peace movement or to either one party was expressed more strongly, more uh, with more determination than any congressman can remember in, in recent years, in 15 years, 20 years. They don't remember when people, while they were home, grabbing them by the lapels or getting in their face and saying, no war with Syria. Because here was a case where they could see America did not have interest in involving itself in that war. And yet, 10 days after the attack on August 21st, on August 31st, a Saturday, it was expected, I think, by every commentator I know, of every hue, that when the inspectors left on Saturday, the UN inspectors, we would attack. And the inspectors were leaving on Saturday afternoon. Uh, that could mean an attack on Sunday or Monday or Tuesday, but as a matter of fact, uh, what was being predicted was an attack within hours. 